A very good morning, students. Today we are going to learn an important aspect of the bone. This is probably the last lecture in the, uh, I mean to say, general aspect about the osteology, which I wanted to tell to a newly admitted student. And this is the title of this video will be the guidelines to study a bone. How you will study a bone? When will you go to the demonstration classes? or when you want to learn a bone, a particular bone if you want to learn, okay, how you should, these are the guidelines, points which you should keep in mind and according to this, you should learn each and every bone, okay, say for example, if you are going to learn any bone, say for example, this is the femur bone, it is a long bone of the thigh, if you want to learn uh, about this bone, then what are these important aspect which you should cover? First important thing which I will like to tell before this guideline even that if you want to learn any bone, that particular bone should be in your hand. Without holding the bone in your hand or keeping the bone in front of you on your table, you should not learn any bone because just by seeing the diagram you cannot understand the bone. If you are having the bone, you will learn it very fast, okay, very fast, okay, and then you will remember it uh, forever, okay. So, the bone should be kept in your hand, okay. Second important thing is that, okay, just before starting any bone study in detail, you should know some important structures of about that bone. That means, if suppose it is a long bone, it will have the two ends and a side then you should know which is the upper end and which is the lower end. But how you will come to know that which is the upper end or which is the lower end of this bone? This you can know by the two ways, either ask your, uh, I mean to say, your teacher which is the upper end, which is he will identify for you or just open a diagram from a book of osteology and then you just come to know which is upper end, lower end and then you try to understand very broadly, okay, okay, in a gross way, which are the bony features of the bone. Bony features means which are the other structures of a bone, okay. Say for example, which is, which are the borders, say for, which is the medial border or lateral border or posterior border, which is an anterior surface or a posterior surface of the bone which are the main bony prominences, say for example, greater trochanter, lesser trochanter and the condyles, that much. Okay, that much you should know about a bone before you come to this uh, guideline points. Now you are prepared for the study of a bone. The first aspect of the bone is that of the side determination of the bone. The first thing for any bone, whether it is a long bone, short bone, a regular bone or any other bone is there, you have to understand about, I mean, so you first thing which you should learn is its side determination, whether you are having the bone of right side or left side, okay. So, for example, if this is the femur, I don't know it, whether it is of the right side or left side, I have to first determine whether it is of right side or that of that is done. And this is how you will identify whether it is of right side or left side. I just told you that you have just seen some of the broad point. For example, you have learned with the help of your teacher or book that the upper end has a head, a rounded ball like structure is there. If the, this is femur, that is the upper end. So never keep then the bone like this because then this head will go down. So we know that now the head is an always at a proximal end of the bone. Okay, it is the proximal end of the upper end. Okay, so keep the bone upper end. Then you should uh, have learned also with the help of the book or your teacher some of the broad thing that there is a surface of the bone and this surface which is slightly convex forward and is smooth, just move your hand on this. That is the anterior surface and on the posterior aspect there is a broad ridge, okay, or a line is there, rough line is there and this is called as the linea aspera and this line or ridge is present 
on the posterior aspect of the bone. So this is posteriorly placed. Okay. So how you will I identify the side of the bone? Keep the bone in such a way that the head faces towards median plane. Head faces towards the median plane. And then this ridge or the line which is called as it should be kept posteriorly or the convex smooth anterior surface should be placed anteriorly and then this will give you the side of the bone. Now suppose if the head is also facing medially and it is upward but here the linea aspera is facing anteriorly it is wrong it should be faced posteriorly and the surface the anterior surface is smooth convex surface should face anteriorly so it is of the right side not of the left side because then the linea aspera or this ridge bony ridge is facing anteriorly that is wrong so in this way for every bone you have to identify the side without identifying the side whether the bone belong to right side or to the left side hmm, there is no use of learning because if you are holding the bone or if you have determined the wrong side then everything will be wrong everything will be wrong so the correct identification of side is very important when you are just learning from the book then the description will be just opposite if you are have identified the bone of the opposite side and you say in opposite direction okay right so the most important is the side determination of the bone and for every bone you have to learn that how to identify the side now this the side determination is only true for the bones which are having the right and left side bilateral bones present on both the sides say the bones of the Upper, upper limb and the bones of the lower limb. The bones of the axial skeleton, most of them they are single. For example, the vertebral column bones they are single. For example, sternum is single, hind bone is single. And most of the bone in your skull will be also single, except few which are uh, having the, on both the sides. Say, for example, the parietal bone, the, the I need to say temporal bone they will be on both the sides otherwise most of the bones some of the facial bones are right and left zygomatic bone okay the nasal bone they are of right and left otherwise most of the bone of the your skeleton of the head will be single because it belongs to the axial skeleton but the bones of the ribs ribs bones they are also bilateral right and left so most of the bones though in the axial skeleton they are single bone there is no right and left so there is no need to identify them but those axial bones which are having the bilateral i mean to say they are bilaterally formed then you will have to determine the side okay let's come to the second point the second important point after you have determined the side is anatomical position each and every bone each and every organ of the body before you start studying them should be kept in anatomical position and why it has to be kept in anatomical position i have explained in great detail in the general anatomy videos okay in the videos because when you are i mean to say learning it from the textbook they are considering that organ or that bone as if it is placed in anatomical position and then all the relation of the blood vessels, nerves, attachment of muscle, they are described uh, thinking that the bone is in anatomy. So you should also keep your bone in anatomical position. But then question comes, how to find the bone, I am saying how to keep the bone in anatomical position. Again, your teacher will help you or your book will help you to keep in anatomical position. First, hold the bone in the same hand as it to side to which it belongs. Say for example, this is the femur of the right side. I'll, I should always hold it into the my right hand, into the my right hand. And then I should keep it hmm, in such a way that it's... Uh, is in the anatomical position. 
for every bone anatomical position will differ will differ for the femur since the femur is a bone where the two lower ends of the which are made up of the median and lateral condyle they are at the knee joint they are closely placed but the upper end okay they are wide apart and this is because there is a these two right and left hip bones they articulate with the uh, pelvic girdle this is the pelvic girdle for example hip bone and then this is the upper end but the lower end is then going more towards the median plane because when you are standing in anatomical position your knee joints are close to each other but your upper end will be wide apart so if you will remove this then this will give a roughly the anatomical position of the bone okay and this is also found by keeping this the lower end in a horizontal surface when you will touch the lower end to the horizontal surface this will give the anatomical position so always keep the bone while you are learning it in the anatomical position and that will vary from uh, bone to bone bone that's why it is important to know the anatomical position let's come to the third point that is the general features of a bone you should then next learn what is general feature general features means which are the bony feature on which yesterday's video was based this was for the bony features okay either it is the elevation or depression from the surface of the bone bony projections they were all will have to be learned first for example you have to learn first the head then you should learn about the neck then at the upper end there is a greater trochanter see this irregular bony big mass is called as greater trochanter which i have said you in the previous video then this conical projection is called as the lesser trochanter is there there are the three borders in the sap this is the lateral border because head is towards medial side so this is the rounded medial border this is the lateral border and that linea spira or bony ridge which is present on posterior side it is the posterior border and since there are three borders there will be three surface between medial and lateral it will be the anterior surface between posterior and lateral it is lateral surface between medial and posterior border it will be the medial this i am just it will vary from bone to bone but then you should know about the borders and surfaces if you are dealing with a long bone and many of the bony features okay this will be called as the general feature and for example at the lower end you see so you are seeing the two globular structure are the mass okay bony mass is large and this is the towards the head this will be the medial condyle this will be the lateral condyle on the surfaces there are bony projection they are the medial and lateral epicondyle there will be the lines or ridges okay supracondylar line will be there this kind of all the bony features elevations or depressions for each particular bone you will have to understand and that will form the general feature once you have learned the general features then again the site information and anatomical position will become very easy then you will not forget okay then you will not forget then coming to the fourth point is the particular feature particular features means what all the attachment of the bone say for example the attachment of the muscles on the bone for example this anterior surface gives attachment or origin to a muscle which is called as the vastus intermediate so you have to just draw with the help of the pink chalk the attachment or origin of a muscle and if you are just learning the insertion of the muscles where they are inserted say for example here the pectineus muscle is attached in the lesser trochanter ilicus and then the um, i mean say sas minor not pectineus this is the sas major then ilicus and then pectineus are attached then insertion has to be drawn with the help of the blue chalk so keep a red chalk and say a pink chalk or red chalk and then the blue chalk and just keep on drawing your 
I mean to say, the attachment, origin, and insertion of muscle with that of the uh, chalks, okay, with the chalk, and then rub it, and then you again practice it with this. When you are just learning about the relationship of the blood vessels, now then you can draw this relation. If a nerve is directly in relation to that of the <coughs> bone, then draw a solid yellow line for the uh, now if it is in relation to that similarly a artery relation has to be drawn into the vein and the relation of the vein which is very rare has to be drawn into the bone so always draw this relationship if they are directly in relation and lying onto the bone then you should draw also the attachment of the ligaments and articular capsule which forms the joint. For example, if you want to draw the attachment of a ligament, say here is the attachment of the medial collateral ligament of the knee joint that is on medial epicondyle, you just draw it with that of the green chalk okay so and then the articular capsules the margin of the i mean to say the at the margin of the condyles which is the site for the attachment of the articular capsule that has to be drawn okay that has to be drawn and where it is going you can draw it like that and that is to be also uh, has to be drawn drawn with the help of the green chalk so articular capsule ligaments they are supposed to be you so you are supposed to draw them with that of the uh, green chalk while the muscles origin the red chalk and the muscles insertion that is tendinous insertion with the help of that of the blue chalk okay the blood vessels the, the artery red uh, now with the yellow and the vein again with that blue so this are will be the various structures which are in relation to or they are attached on to the bone that has to be learned and that will come under the particular feature then we come to ossification of the bone that means how this bone develops and for the ossification just draw a very simple diagram for example this is the femur you draw like this a very rough diagram the medial and lateral epicondyle is here at the lower end the head is here neck is here greater trochanter and this is the lesser trochanter is there now here the say for example if the primary center appears in the seventh week just make it seventh week of intrauterine life then the center appears for lower end just before birth okay for it to write it here before birth or how much weeks after birth how much months after birth here it appears just before the birth that is the secondary center then center appears for the head for greater trochanter for lesser trochanter at various uh, times then they fuse and form a single epiphysis okay and so called as epiphysis epiphysia this will form as the epiphysis for the lower end this is the lower epiphysis and then the bone which has developed from that of the primary center it is called as the diaphysis it will be called as the diaphysis and in between whatsoever cartilage is there remaining it is epiphyseal cartilage so this rough diagram if you draw okay when the primary center appears when the secondary and then lastly at what time these centers that is diaphysis will fuse with that of the epiphysis that will complete the ossification at the upper and lower end the center here has appeared in the before birth and will fuse last and that that means this will be the growing end. So you should know which is the growing end. For the growing end, how you will identify a growing end? What are the epiphyseal center and diaphyseal center? For individual bone, they are different. And what is a growing end? What is epiphysis and diaphysis? Again, go to the, I mean to say, the videos on the general anatomy or the video on the ossification of the bone. Okay, so that. 
But then in most of the institution, this ossification are taught, but some of the institution ossification is not taught. That you should know, okay, and ask your teacher. Then lastly, you come to the <coughs> point, that is the guideline point will be, you learn the applied or the clinical anatomy of individual bone. Say for example here, which are the common site for the fracture of bone. Say here it is the leg, okay, in case of femur. Okay. In this way, there will be an applied importance of the ossification center of the lower end which appear at birth. So that you can always, if the center is there, that means the child was born just before the ninth month, okay, or in the ninth month of the intrauterine life. That means <coughs> the child was almost, I mean, the fetus was almost formed. So there are various applied importance are given to that of the in these world bones which will be of use in your clinical practice okay as a doctor you will use those uh, is, i mean to say knowledge of the structure of a bone that is to be learned into the applied anatomy or the clinical anatomy i hope that you have understood the guidelines to study an individual bone and this point will help you to understand each and every bone if you will learn them under these different heading. Thank you very much for watching these videos on the general aspect which I wanted to tell you okay before you actually go to your classes uh, on the osteology. Thank you very much.